Um, I am excited and honored to be here this morning with Peter Gold from uh, Gold Studio, even though he's in Riyadh right now, he's traveling, he's on the road. So uh, Peter, thank you so much for joining me and the Morocco community, despite you being on the road. I'm going to make sure that I give you, make you co-host so you're able to, there you are. Assalamu alaikum. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. I'm free to speak. <laughs> Thanks, Wadud. Uh, Alhamdulillah, it's beautiful to be with you and your amazing community, mashallah. Um, it's a great blessing. Uh, Alhamdulillah. I'm well, dude, always, uh, you know, appreciative of your work and Alhamdulillah has been very beneficial, you know, in my journey and my family as well, who have uh, benefited from, mashallah, your, your beautiful uh, teaching and wisdoms and nasiha. So, of course, it's my pleasure to join with your community as well. And, uh, yeah, thank you for inviting me. And uh, Alhamdulillah, what a blessing to, to be with uh, everyone live. Um, so I'm in Riyadh at the moment, um, but um, I'm usually in Australia, but uh, Alhamdulillah, it's... Uh, it's a good time to chat with you in, in the States. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a shout out to everybody that's here. Let's see. So we're just checking in the chat, uh, welcoming Abdiya and Adita. Um, many of these are my masterclass students from our cohort seven, of the Mindfulness Masterclass. Um, some of, okay, I see some local people here, Dr. Anihal El Ramli. I see some of our, um, you know, community members here, Everett, Hadil. And Brother Kamel from our masterclass, Khalid, Latifa, Mashallah, Lubna, Mahmouda, Misba, Najla, Nazira, Nida, Roda, Roshan, Samia, Dr. Samia, Mashallah from the UK, Suruhina from California, Sophia, Dr. Suhair Kairula is here, Mashallah, welcome, Sunny and Yasmin Zakira from South Africa, Zaina, Mashallah, beautiful. Um, actually, that's probably Sadat from, uh, from Europe. So welcoming everybody from all over the world, alhamdulillah. I think we're people from Nigeria, Cape Town, we're people from uh, all over the States and we're people from the UK. And uh, so this is an honor to have you all. And this is a really exciting conversation for me. I'm actually looking forward to learning from Peter. Um, Peter is someone that I will tell you a short story. Um, he's been an inspiration because I, I see his work and all the beautiful things that he does. And so um, I always in my mind, thought that this is one guy that I want to meet, right? And so I go for this retreat back in 2000, and I think that was 2018. We went to like four or five countries, and one of them was Indonesia, and we were at Muhammad Faris's Productive Muslim Retreat in uh, Indonesia. And, um, you know, Alhamdulillah, Muhammad gave us a little, you know, time to present our work there. And uh, I walk up to this uh, sister who's taking, who's in the buffet. My wife and I, we're at the buffet, and she's also taking food from the buffet. And I say salam and I ask where she's from. And she says, Sydney, I'm like, oh, wow, yeah. You know, there is this uh, one brother in Sydney that I really love and I want to meet him. And <laughs> so, um, and then I say, yeah, do you know, uh, do you know Peter Gold? And, and she says that, uh, yes, I'm married to him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it was Peter's wife that was, that was there at that retreat. It was just an uh, amazing experience, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, mashallah. It was, I'm glad you, well, it's good that you met her first, right? <laughs> you probably got the inside, the, the inside story. Um, and I'm glad uh, that we could connect soon after, mashallah. So yeah, and we've had a few, a uh, few happy stories since then and good memories with you. And uh, I remember uh, one uh, event in New York City and a few other, um, other places we've been able to connect. So mashallah, you know, you've got such a beautiful global community here. And I think really connected through the heart globally in uh, especially these these kind of times um you know i think it's so so wonderful to have this uh, global sahaba so uh what a what a great joy to be with you alhamdulillah 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 so peter i'm gonna i'm gonna go into um these questions right and i am looking at some of the design work that you were doing on your campaign so i'm gonna pull up the screen here for a minute um and here's a screen so we're going to be talking about this, how to unlock our heart-centered best self. And um, 
you know, challenge Peter a little bit to discuss his heart design journey um, in and make sense of how can we craft our best self with those principles? Because um, this week, right after we get off this call, this session, I'm teaching my master class and we're actually talking about purpose, visualizing our best self, you know, developing our, our best self, best self blueprint. How do we make sure and how do we, what are some principles we can use to develop our, uh, let me just send this to the chat window. Um, here we are. Yeah, right here. Um, and here is the screen here. Um, I'm going to, let's zoom in a little bit. Um, these are beautiful, mashallah. And um, Peter, your work, that whenever I see your work and the way that you express your thoughts, it's, it tells me, as soon as I see this, I feel this sense of beauty, this sense of calm, this sense of ihsan, uh, the sense of spiritual excellence, right? Um, and there are two really important things here. One thing that I want to discuss with you here, you know, that's going to be in your book, um, are, are these specific pillars that you're mentioning here, rida or contentment, baraka or blessings, trust or amana, you know, ex excellence and ihsan, niya, intentionality, ikhlas and integrity. So these, how do we build our best self through these beautiful, um, you know, pillars? That's one of the questions I want to ask. And the second question, we will go there in a minute, is this um, journey that I see. This was really, really beautiful. I think one of the one of the graphics here talks about your journey. Um, that what is the journey right here? The embracing the heart-centered design, seeking the path, finding the way, and eliminating the road. This is really, really interesting to me. So these two things I, I would love to um, kind of discuss, but I know that a lot of the audience also wanted to hear your story, you know, your, your personal story of journey to the faith and journey to the space and journey to bringing this beautiful connection between spirituality and entrepreneurship. So do you want to stop there before I share the screen? Do you want to just stop for a moment and just maybe let us know a little bit about you, your story, please, if you don't mind. Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam. Well, alhamdulillah, that was a very beautiful and deep series of, of uh, questions, Wadud, and uh, I would expect nothing less from you in a good way. So um, it's a little bit about me, and it's heavily linked to the questions you asked as well. Um, so alhamdulillah, uh, I grew up in Australia and always gravitated towards a creative path and work that we now might call design, graphic design, this kind of work. Um, I'm giving you the very abridged version. And there was one path of my life that's been over, you know, since childhood, which is, I guess you might call creative practice or what later became my profession in design for starting with graphic design and then other kinds of design like product design and, and helping people kind of, you know, solve a problem through design or taking an idea and helping share that with the world using different kinds of uh, creative material or products or digital work or printed work. A whole range of things and my path of study and work became uh concerned of and, and focusing on design and on the in, in parallel to that especially from my late teenage years um and then alhamdulillah when i was 20 i, I embraced islam and became muslim and now i'm 42. so the in parallel to this design journey if you like this sort of kind of pro, you know professional path um there's been really this uh spiritual uh you know, uh, seeking. And alhamdulillah, in parallel with learning about design and how you practice and how you, you know, develop products and, and, uh, and, and you know, um, the studies that I was doing, uh, I was seeking, you know, so that means I was traveling, meeting with scholars, reading books, uh, seeking sahba and, you know, companionship of people that understood how to live well and, and develop this kind of holistic way of understanding uh, and inshallah, the prophetic way of how we might live and work and um, developing this perspective on what is a good life? How do we seek the divine? How do we come to know Allah? And what are what's our roles and responsibilities on that kind of uh, living that prophetic path, inshallah? So this 20-year journey on one side, 
um, and then this twenty year journey on on the other, actually they're they're directly integrated. You can't really separate them. Um, but what I was what kind of struggled to find was you know guidance, resources, tools, materials, um, you know specific practices and processes that kind of directly had these together. So someone, you know, might be, be hiring me or asking my help to build an app or a website or develop a brand identity or, you know, something to do in, in the kind of product space, um, you know, but I'm also trying to make sure I do that within the guidelines from this kind of spiritual perspective, rather than just the kind of materials that I might have got from, you know, I was at Stanford Design School for a time and, and so on. So really a lot of the life path has been at the intersection of these two things. And so the book that you were kindly sharing there called The Heart of Design, Spirituality, Creativity and Entrepreneurship is really an exploration around these topics, but also with some practical kind of, you know, tools and processes that Alhamdulillah have been able to kind of distill over that time. Things that have helped me and my team to kind of take this beautiful theory and these beautiful kind of ideas and concepts that we might learn from our spiritual teachers and our kind of Islamic practice but then infuse that and illuminate and enrich our uh, creative or entrepreneurial aspirations as well. So if we take those um, beautiful words that you brought up there, um, these are words that everyone here on the call, I'm sure is very familiar with and probably mashallah are practicing their whole lives with, you know, like if you think of baraka or ahsan um, or rida, these are all, you know, deep, but very well-known concepts. Uh, they're definitely not new ideas at all that I'm, I'm claiming at all. Uh, what, what I've done here though, is the, these are particular words uh, and I, I'd call them spiritual concepts that um, really just became very uh, important in terms of influencing how I think about design and uh, how, um, for example, the, the culture I tried to develop around our, our team the kind of products and clients that we you know work on and work with, the partners we have, to really think of these more directly. So in the book and in the course that I've been teaching as well around this for the last three years, we really unpack some of these in the context of design. So you know, building a business or launching a product, um, how we can apply these. And I, I guess a simple way of thinking about that is I didn't want to make it too kind of abstract, philosophical. You know, I'm I'm not a definitely not a spiritual teacher in, in that sense, um, but use them to help elevate our questions and our, and our practice. So when we're building a product or a company or we have an idea we want to work on, how we can take some of those content, concepts more specifically and apply them. And then we go through various activities. So the book really you know, unpacks some of that, but then it's woven in with lots of little stories and anecdotes from the journey and lots of learnings Lots of things that, you know, I think really helped me and also plenty of mistakes and things not to do <laughs> that I learned, you know, so it's really, you know, it's got this meant to be kind of very humanizing uh, journey. And, and I want to make the book quite readable for people. And inshallah is, uh, you know, it's not something that would just hopefully sit on a shelf and kind of uh, be too dense. It's meant to be quite accessible and, and a little bit almost fun to read as well, inshallah. Peter, Peter, if you don't mind, I, I watch the... Um, little video that also captures your story. Um, you know, do you mind if I play that for a minute? Of course. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So uh, it's it's really well done. It kind of captures your story. And, you know, I really am reflecting on, you know, I'm not people, those of us that are a big fan of your work and we feel that you're doing this beautiful work for the Ummah, um, we feel this connection, not just in, in terms of design, but in terms of like these values can transform who we are, right? And these values can help us find our way. And that's the conversation I want to have a little bit about people that are here joining us and all of them are trying to get to their best potential, right? Crafting their best life, designing per se, let's say, you know, applying that design to their own life, visualizing the best, you know, and, and how do you find that way, find that path? Do want to ask your wisdom on that. Uh, but before then, let me um, play this. It's a beautiful story. And I want the audience to feel free to ask some questions after we uh, listen, after we watch this um, journey of Peter here. So share my sound here. Bismillah.
We have an incredible ummah full of creativity, ideas, and ambition to serve. But we often feel stuck when it comes to turning well-intentioned concepts into successful and sustainable products, brands, and companies. My name is Peter Gould. And this new project, The Heart of Design, aims to help aspiring entrepreneurs, professionals, and students bridge that gap. My mission is to empower a new way of creatively confident, talented Muslims and equip them with the tools they need to launch spiritually grounded ideas that can rise up to meet our community's global challenges. My new book, The Heart of Design, Spirituality, Creativity and Entrepreneurship, builds on my successful online program, which has helped hundreds of students from around the world find balance and purpose in their work over the past three years. This book is an interactive guide to aligning creative, professional and spiritual intentions, reimagining contemporary design processes to include Islamic principles and perspectives, and featuring practical tools and activities that focus on design for remembrance, not design for destruction. I also hope to share insightful wisdoms and spiritual anecdotes from my interviews with more than 50 amazing individuals who have achieved holistic success including creative professionals working at leading design companies such as Apple, IDEO and Pixar. You can also expect to learn about my own personal journey in the book, the people and places that have inspired me, the experiences that have helped shape my approach and the lessons I've learned along the way. To bring this vision of an empowered Ummah to life, I would love your support. We're looking to raise funds to complete the editing, printing and distribution of the Heart of Design book and expand the content and reach of the online program to be more accessible and affordable to wider audiences and communities, inshallah. You can play a key role in making this movement a reality by pre-ordering your copy of the book or contributing to the campaign. Thank you for supporting The Heart of Design. Jazakallah khairan. Beautifully done, mashallah. What a beautiful video. Uh, it just makes me feel you know, like there are so many, so many different um, feelings here. But one really key thing that me and you discussed in one of our past, um, I think, live together was this one concept you mentioned there about design for remembrance. Mm -hmm. And I we were just talking about, you know, mindfulness, you know, taqwa, consciousness of awareness of God is a way to come back to our best self. You know, the first step is to notice distraction. And once we know that we're distracted, the awareness becomes that, you know, foundation for us to then get to a sense of place of regulation, right? So first, that awareness, mindfulness, and in our framework, we talk about presence, purpose, and practice to build ihsan. And if we live in that spiritual presence in this world, inshallah, we get to live in the spiritual presence, in the presence and proximity of God and the messenger, so I said, and the hereafter. Um, and we were talking about mindful vicar as an experience that can help us, you know, shift out of our lower self to our higher self, right? Um, and when you're talking about this design for remembrance, what a beautiful concept, like, like <laughs> creating, designing our life for remembrance, that we ourselves become an embodiment you know, of these qualities and these characteristics you're talking about. So tell us a little bit about that design for remembrance, a little bit, if you don't mind. Yeah, mashallah. Well, I uh, really appreciate how you shared and articulated all of that, alhamdulillah. So look, I think we'll all we'll all um, agree um, that we're in a world of, of where a lot of particularly digital content and devices, uh, but also other things, are really fighting for our attention actively, you know, and, and in, in fact, some of the most well-funded design in the world is specifically designed to addict you and rush you and pressure you and, and, um, and take your time. And, and so much of the, you know, world's leading um, kind of commercial design talent, uh, particularly for tech companies, but also media and certain kind of, you know, retail and consumer products, th their whole, uh, focus is how do we get your attention you know because they they know that eventually that usually equals money right in, in either directly from you or from advertisers and so one thing that um, it's very clear to me that 
uh, even in my own kind of design studies, you know, when I was at particular design colleges and did uh, different kind of programs early on, is is um you know there's there's it's very clear like that design is in, you know for for marketing advertising intention a lot of digital products and so for example um you know uh there was an interview with the the founder of Netflix and they asked him um who's your biggest competition right who who, who might be and he said um our biggest competitor is sleep right meaning they're trying to squeeze more watching time out of people every night you know because just another 10 minutes one more episode you know um you know next episode starting in five that's all by design and a lot of effort goes into design for a, a distraction design for addiction so um what what uh, i had sort of you know uh, you know i guess understood from my teachers and from the different um you know kind of spiritual uh, grounding um, from the environments I was in is that, you know, this is the total opposite. We need to be seeking and inshallah, uh, trying to be in that state of presence, awareness, consciousness of the divine and uh, in, a, in a state of remembrance, inshallah, as often as we can, you know, and the great masters of our, of our path and tradition, mashallah, are they, they're not a moment or a breath goes where they don't have that remembrance. So, the, the, the kind of simple fra framing of this is designed for remembrance is working at every level, both within ourselves, but also the projects we turn our attention to, where we focus, the companies we might try to build, the team culture we might try to establish in our companies, the products we try to develop, uh, the, you know, the content we might be you know, creating. All of that, if we take the mindset of we're trying to design for remembrance, it's just a, I think, you know, fundamental uh, difference from how a lot of other design is today. And so, um, you know, that's really the basis for a lot of a lot of the book is how, how might we design for remembrance in whatever it is we're, we're trying to do, inshallah. It's beautiful. Um, I'm going to go to um, so the audience, everybody that's here. Um, we're not able to see you because um, of this interview, but we would love to hear from you in the chat. Feel free to let us know if you have any questions for Peter. I'm gonna share this one more time and just talk a little bit about where did these principles come from? You know, Riba yeah. and Baraka and Ikhlas, what do they mean for you? And how can, you know, those, that we have many aspiring entrepreneurs here or people that are trying to craft, you know, this blueprint for their best self. And how can these help us craft our best, you know, journey towards our best self? What are, what are some things that, that you can share here on these principles? Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, again, these are all very, you know, quite universal words. And there are things that people, especially, mashallah, you know, most of them from a young age have become very familiar with these concepts. Although my journey only started um, really when I was about 18, 19. But in the last 20 years, I think, you know, I've inshallah come to understand and, and, and inshallah practice these uh, or at least aspire to practice these uh, as part of, you know, living well and in alignment. And I think that key word is alignment. So if we were to take um, any of these, I mean, you, you could also easily apply many others that, you know, might, might be relevant to your particular journey. But these ones for me really um, were a set that captured um a way to align the creative and entrepreneurial and professional journey with uh, our spiritual uh, aspirations, inshallah. So if we take one like Rida, now um, Rida is a very uh, powerful um, companion on the path of entrepreneurship, for example. <laughs> so, you know, you, for example, might have some great success with your product or you might have something that you know goes better than than you think or open some has some blessing that opens for you through that and real law is being you know content with that and grateful for that and maybe even sometimes you're happy with that as well but it's equally when things don't go your way when things don't work out and honestly in entrepreneurship and product design and building a startup for example it's almost certain that you know in the at least in the early parts of the journey uh, things will not go how you expect and things will not be as uh, smooth or easy and, as you might hope and this is where you also need that contentment is that you know this is really uh you know this practice of like okay this is um you know i'm not going to uh, be dissuaded i'm going to keep 
going with my, my intentionality and be in that straight. So if you have great success with what you're building or, you know, if you're granted that or if things are not working out, you're still maintaining that this sense of the law that you're you're um, you're pleased and you're, you're you know, you're feeling uh, in a state of uh, humility and gratitude and shukur, this maqam of shukur for entrepreneurship. So these are, again, these are quite, um, I mean, these are things that sort of are quite maybe Im implicit for a practicing Muslim if they're trying to build a business. But what, what I found helpful is just by expressing them a little more directly, we can ask questions like, how might I embody real law into my entrepreneurial journey or my even my business plan? You know, so how can I specifically actually map that in? And the whole idea of the hard design is that these two things are not, you know, completely separate tracks of knowledge or, you know, we might go to a halakha one day and the next day we're trying to work on this, uh, you know, this, this product idea is that they really live together and they, they become actually very beautiful when you're able to put these things, take them off the shelf or whatever and actually, you know, do that. So one of the activities we do, it's called a heart centered design canvas is a way of letting people map out their ideas, something they're trying to build or something they're trying to work on, might even be a community project or some kind of educational product they have, is sometimes it lives all in our head or might live in our heart. It helps us just map out easily who, you know, who is this for? What's the impact we're hoping to have, inshallah? Uh, what is the transformation we hope that this product, brand or idea might have for people? And then using the values and the Nia and you know, intentionality into that business plan so that is um yeah there's a that is the, the concept of uh just helping people map these together so they don't kind of live this separate world but it's just directly uh applying our spiritual uh, aspirations and our tradition into the ideas that we want to have in, in a visual way and a accessible way inshallah yeah um thank you i really appreciate that i just wanted to say that, um, you know, riba is such a beautiful concept, um, but I have not seen, of course, you see ihsan and intentionality, you know, um, those uh, are pretty um, important and key part of most people's kind of like journey. Okay, I'm trying to strive for excellence. I'm trying to have the niya, but the riba is not always, it doesn't always make it into core, like one of the core values, you know, like mm. if I've seen like core values at schools or Islamic organizations or um, but when you, when I saw Rida, it really made me feel this sense of connection because recently we've been studying, you know, uh, about this masterclass we want to design on how to be an adult. And this is, you know, David Ricco's work on how as people, as we're growing, as we're developing, we don't, um, deal with difficulties in our fear, anger, guilt, and self-doubt, and um, and how to learn to like overcome and regulate these emotions and find ourselves as we become adults. So one of the things that we really found was that a lot of times that fear that we have, fear of loss or fear of you know that not having acceptance or validation or fear of not belonging uh, or fear of losing things or fear of not succeeding, you know, or even fear of like sometimes when we say visualize your best journey visualize what does the best version of yourself look like from three to five years from now people don't even want to visualize because they're like we're going to disappoint ourselves you know yeah. have these they have these fear that they don't want to you know like work with and so one of the things that we talk about oh i appreciate that um one of the things we talk about you know we just did a khutbah on that we called it fearless rida fearless rida and we found that suffering equals pain plus resistance so if you have pain or difficulties in this life the more you resist the more your suffering increases right so inversely we you know we are trying to kind of work with this theory that you know your suffering can can go down because it also equals pain minus you know this acceptance this deep god-centered acceptance the more you accept the more you're content the more you're able to reduce the difficulty of that challenge or that test or the trial that you go through. Yes, please please do tell us about this slide. Yeah, well, I love how you, this is why I enjoy our chats. I want to do it, <laughs> is hearing how you, yeah, fearless Rida, mashallah. 
I mean, it's, uh, th these are the, and there's a question I saw, Michelle, in the chat, which maybe we'll cycle back to. So thanks for sharing, but it's, I think it's very much related is um, sometimes these are things we, we learn about and in, well, I'm speaking for myself, I guess, you know, might be in a halakha or I might hear it on a talk or, you know, I sort of come across this idea, idea of riba. Um, but then, you know, day to day, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, sh build my idea or launch my, you know, company and, uh, whatever it might be. So it's really just applying that and kind of thinking a little of like, okay, what does that actually mean in practice for, uh, you know, the day-to-day -day challenges I might have in trying to get my uh, product going. So, you know, I've just kind of got three examples here of, of how we might think of Riba in this kind of context. And so I've, one is to practice humility and gracefulness by appreciating any success as a gift. So, you know, inshallah, if you get one customer or 10 or 50 and, or you get a, lot, a good bit of feedback or someone shares your thing and, or someone, you, maybe you get a promotion or something great happens. It's like, Alhamdulillah, you know, Allah, that's, that's a gift for me. And then, you know, that becomes an amana as well later on. We'll, we'll get back to that. Uh, but, but two, it's, you know, reciprocally, you know, is to accept challenges and setbacks as learning and wisdom on the path to growth. And this is a very entrepreneurial uh, kind of, um, uh, expectation almost is that you know you, you kind of you know in, in entrepreneurial um, circles you'll often hear the phrase you know fail fast fail forward and it's this idea of like you know trying things it doesn't work and rather than getting fed up with that and being like oh why is no one you know buying my product no one does like my thing um, you know it's it's to keep you know in, encouraging you to not take that as a um, you know take that anything other than learning for your next version and keep iterating and prototyping. And I think that's a, you know, that's a deep uh, spiritual uh, design concept we can apply to ourselves, of course, on this, you know, the path of, of Tazkia, for example, is uh, we know that's designed for us exactly how you described that. Um, but it very much applies to iterating and prototyping, uh, you know, your product or your, your company or whatever you're trying to build. And thirdly, I like this one is to, in this idea of robot, is to cultivate awe and wonder at the creative majesty of nature and design of the universe. And mm. so, you know, this is being in this state of, of complete gratitude and acceptance of the, you know, the divine reality that at least what, what we can perceive of it uh, in the universe around us and how the, there's a divine order and governance of, of everything in creation. And the word design there, you know, you really stand, understand at the deepest level from from the designer, inshallah. Subhanallah, beautiful, beautiful. Like Ibn Atta'ala mentions, you know, like when you see the see the art, you cannot but reflect on the artist, the one who's yes. built all these signs all around us. It's beautiful. Yes, um, exactly. Um, I wanted to ask you, Peter, about this embracing design, seeking the path, finding the way. How can that apply to us? As many of us are, you know, uh, we want to kind of get into that seeking the path, finding the way, limiting the road, and perhaps connecting that to Dr. Suhair's question here on what is your advice to overcome the challenges we face when we try to connect spirituality with people's lives, especially their business life? Um, so I think that might be a good kind of question to go into. But I just want to say that, you know, I, I'm looking back at my own entrepreneurial journey when I first left my, you know, full-time paying, you know, uh, you know, a pretty decent paying job coming out of a good university and deciding to go onto this entrepreneurship thing. And some months like nothing happening, you know, <laughs> and uh, yep. waiting for, and, and taking like years to kind of iterate and get to where you feel like you're finding your way and you're finding, yep. you know, and, and just kind of like having that visualization and coming back to keep coming back to God and finding that contentment in every, every, you know, like ups and downs of that journey, such an important yes. part of like embracing and knowing that when you are seeking something beautiful, it doesn't matter where you are, your journey, yes. you know, every part of the journey is blessed, even if you're, whether you're up or down and having that sense of Rida, because every one of them can be a blessing for you. Right. Yes. Yes, and I, and I see, I like that, you know, you, and you mentioned specifically, um, you know, your own kind of journey. And, and I think sometimes, you know, we need to hear, um, 
we need to hear the stories, even from our, our teachers and the people, you know, in our lives is that, you know, sometimes, um, well, a lot of this is also, I'll, I'll share, is coming in my own exploration and, and journey. And I had a lot of questions for, uh, you know, for, for people. And I would ask questions about, um, you know, should I even be creating products and brands? Like, should I just be going and, you know, kind of lurking on my spiritual practice and myself? Or um, w what changed for me a little bit is when my children came along, Alhamdulillah, I have three kids, um, two teenagers, and my son is, is now uh, 10, Alhamdulillah. And in that journey, I saw, you know, I, I think the pressing, urgent need for beautiful content, products, experiences, brand, because I saw the world that, they're experiencing the content, the TV shows, the apps, the games, uh, so much in pop culture and entertainment and media, even if you're very protective of their, of what they see here and watch. Um, and, uh, you know, inshallah, I'm sure many of the parents here are, um, it, it's just almost overwhelming, you know, because a, 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 even a, a small child will have access often or you'll find access from a company that spends billions and billions of dollars every year trying to get their attention and build uh, a relation an emotional connection with that child and a certain character or an ip or or some kind of product and a huge amount of design effort goes into that so i guess part of what i come to think of, of my amana in being on this design path is is one trying to build some products myself and my team but also in helping others and encouraging others to build uh, beautiful products, brands, experiences, content that is seeking to design for remembrance, not for distraction. Because, you know, uh, it's all well and good to say, oh, my kids don't have any screen time. There's, you know, uh, you know, there's, they don't watch anything. But at some point they will probably, or at least as a young adult, it finds them. And what are they watching? What are they seeing? What are the ideas coming? And where are our beautiful alternatives and our products? And they're, they're just, there's a great lack. So, um, that's where I think, you know, we've got a great opportunity and we, we should, that's where we need to work together on. Um, I'll just share one more screen if that's okay. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to say that you, you kind of answer one of the questions I had because I was wondering, <laughs> when I, was, I was reflecting on this and I looked at Amana and I said, yeah. I, I don't know what that means. Like for Amana mm. to be mm -hmm. in the part of design, like, because, you know, I, I haven't probably seen your slide and explanation on this specific amana i know this quality but you just yeah. mentioned that we it's a beautiful thing what you just said is that that we have the amana to create something that helps you know move our families our communities to remembrance so you know if you have a gift yeah. it's amana for you to be able to exercise that gift and your talent to do something to serve because you have something to offer. You have an amana. That's a beautiful thing to think about. Like just for a moment, I just like whoa. Mm. It just it just kind of well, connected. I, yeah, and see, see, these are teachings that were shared with me uh, in different ways, and and all of us. But I, it, you know, I, I had to do some thinking um, of like, well, what does that what does that really mean for someone that's a designer trying to earn a living, build a company, you know, help people develop their ideas? I said, well. Actually, you know, I asked one of my teachers about this idea of amana, and it's really, you know, you, you know, part of your, um, you know, gifts is like, well, yeah, you have, you know, great course basics, you know, or clean water, um, you know, safe work environments, but you also have these talents and tools and opportunities you've been gifted. You've got good Wi-Fi, you've got a fast, you know, fancy Mac computer, you've got good coffee, great networks, great sahaba. You know, so what are we doing with that? And um, I think a big part of it is to, inshallah, um, share that knowledge with people. But how do we share knowledge today? Uh, yes, it's important to create great resources, online content, you know, high production, you know, videos, for example. That's a big part of it. But I also think it's an amana on us to, great, to you know, design and, and build beautiful brands and products and platforms, creative experiences. Um, explore emerging technology and how that can be used, you know, for, for remembrance rather than distraction. And, um, you know, it, it requires a consideration and thought and critique. It's not sort of uh, an open uh, invitation to just go and build, you know, more consumer junk. We don't want that either. 
but um, there, there is a path we should walk as communities, I think, and, and as many leaders and thinkers on this call who I'm sure are in positions of leadership or in education or in community, or you know maybe they're working professionally or in technology, um, how do we more actively you know, embrace our uh, spiritual aspirations in, in our design efforts? So this slide here, I won't go through in detail, but you know, there's a couple of things here that maybe are worth um, reflecting on. So for example, uh, in what I call heart-centered design, um, you know, it's embracing inspiration as a gift and a talent as a trust. So you know, I'm sure everyone here on the calls had at some point maybe even like today or this week, like this idea comes to you. It's like, oh, if only that existed. Oh, imagine I could do this. And so much of, of the time I found even our Muslim communities, it, it kind of just sits there and it doesn't necessarily go forward to, to kind of come into the world and it's sort of like, oh, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know how to do it or, you know, but all these big tech companies, you know, they end up taking on our attention and time. And, and the thing is, when an era where you can actually, you know, develop and share ideas and get products built in an iterative way that have huge impact. Um, and maybe one more I'll just reflect on here, which I which I um, appropriated from uh, my friend, Dr. Abdullah Rothman. And he uses this uh, phrase of, you know, uh, this transformative, not transactional lifestyle. Mm. And in entrepreneurship, I think that's really powerful. So traditionally in entrepreneurship kind of training and culture, it's like, I'm going to go crush it. I'm going to get a thousand users. I'm going to go make all this money. This is going to be my profit. I'm going to do this. And maybe I'm going to go buy a Lamborghini. Like so much of that hustle culture exists in entrepreneurial circles, uh, but that's not us. So for us, like what we're trying to build as one of my teachers reminded me when I was struggling with something, it's like, Hey, Peter, you're thinking of working on this business, but it's working on you. <laughs> so this idea of entrepreneurship as more yeah. of a transformative journey and mm -hmm. that, you know, that has a strong relationship to our spiritual path. It's not just a simple transaction of I'm going to build this and get that. It's, it's beautiful. I see so many, you know, similarities because you have the heart centered design. I have the heart centered, you know, the master class. We have a little bit, you know, different um, pillars but some of the core things when you think about the heart and the right. cultivating the heart, they're similar. So you're talking about the transformative, but not transactional. We talk about, you know, like when we do those guided meditations and people ask like, what does meditation do, you know, or what does this deep presence or mindfulness do? And we say the mindfulness and meditation turns a ritual into a transformative experience, you know, so because then your heart is able to feel that presence. Um, Jazakallah Khair, I appreciate it. Did we answer Dr. Suhair's question? Was that kind of addressing her question there? What is your advice to overcome challenges when we face, when we try to connect spirituality with people's lives, especially their business life? Uh, I'm going to add one more thing to help answer that question. And it's it's a big question as well. Uh, yeah. But I would say is that in our design processes, something where let's say we're building something, it's usually... Uh, for a particular audience or community that we're trying to serve or something we're trying to create for them or address them or, you know, you know, um, and traditional kind of um, uh, literature and, you know, podcasts and books in business will be talk about them as a user or maybe a customer. But we know in our tradition, in our path that, well, you, you know, this, this person, this human, they have a heart and a spiritual state. And so what hearts and design is is trying to address is that um, a much richer, deeper kind of understanding that the products we're building, things that in the content we're making has a very powerful, like has a potential um, big responsibility in how uh, it might influence someone's spiritual state. You know, and of course it's only a lot that, you know, makes any of that happen, but um, good or bad in terms of the influence, you know, what we put in the world obviously has a huge impact, but I'd like to think positively in terms of where you ask about, you know, people's lives and especially their business life. It's, um, you know, it's kind of taking human centered design, which is what most design practices sort of focus on and just kind of going a little deeper to heart centered design is that what yeah. perhaps, you know, with Allah's will, what, what uh, transformation can we help facilitate through what we're designing and building? And just by asking those questions, it helps elevate our 
you know, our own approach to what we're making. It's a much bigger amana for us when we think of it that way. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. So everybody, I'm going to ask, next we're going to go to um, Sister Latifa's question. Masha, she's doing some beautiful work. I, I'm loving what she's posting on LinkedIn, uh, on Workship, and uh, how our work can become worship. This is beautiful. So her question here is, how has your understanding of heart Center design evolved over time? So before we go to that question, everybody, here's a link. Make sure you click on the link um, and you, I'm going to just share really fast. Make sure that um, because we're going to get busy answering some of the other questions, I just want to do a quick call to action here is that make sure that everybody grabs a book today. You know, so this weekend we're all doing, you know, kind of like a sense of healthy competition around the world, trying to support Peter from different teams. So our Morakaba team is also part of that. And we would love to give her, give him that support, giving levels. I would say, you know, personally, you know, I, I, or, I definitely ordered my, you know, hundred dollars sign book. I want to make sure that I have Peter's signature <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the collector's edition stickers and all those really fun, really cool design stuff. Um, but, you know, at the, at the least, everybody get the book, right? $25 is the minimum, right? To get at least a copy of the book, right, Peter? Yeah, and of course you're welcome to support even with um if with your dua. <laughs> but it, you know there you can I think donate anything. But uh, I'd love um I'd love to get the book into as many hands as possible. And uh, you know even if you bought it as a gift for someone else that might be trying to you know someone you know that you know is uh, maybe um looking for a little bit of a, a lift or a boost on how to to kind of take their ideas forward. Um, yeah, I'd love your support and help with that. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, get a few a few copies and give it to a few people. And the reason I, I'm saying this is be, not because of design, but because of who Peter is and what this captures. It, this captures the heart of many of us that want to make a difference in this world. You know, we want to serve from a sense of our heart. And Peter is the embodiment of that, mashallah. So um, we were recently discussing this at Muhammad Faris's, you know, book writing masterclass, you know, he just launched the book writing masterclass, Dr. Suhair was there, many, I think Salatifa was there, many of us are there, and we were all chatting, and this really important concept of not finding, you know, high quality books from Muslims that have lived this heart-centered life, you know, and this is one of those beautiful additions to that space, and we need many more, we need everybody that's here to have this type of contribution, inshallah, but you, Peter, is our inspiration, for that vision for ourselves, that we also want to build and continue building, you know, developing that heart-centered life and heart-centered work that we leave behind as our legacy, mashallah. So everybody, please make sure that you, you pre-order, you know, use that link. We really appreciate it. Now, we're going to go into this question of Latifa's question on, um, you know, question, how how have you, how has your understanding um of heart center design evolved over time how has it evolved beautiful over? question and question first here. of all as well uh thank you so much for everyone that's already supporting uh and i can see already a mashallah a number of you have already done that so thank you so much uh, i can see latifa hadil and a few others so thank you for you know for uh supporting alhamdulillah it's a, it's a big honor to uh to know that you know people like uh, your community will do will be reading this and inshallah, you know, sharing it with their, their communities as well. So um, uh, it's a great question. And I like to think that if you ask me this question every five years, I'll have another good answer, you know, inshallah for the rest of my time here. It's like, it's something that evolves and it's, you know, like the knowledge itself, it's, bah, you know, Bahrain, it's endless ocean. And so I would say, you know, I'll be the first to say that my own knowledge in this, intersection of, of uh, design and spirituality is that it's at the very uh, early starting point of, I hope, a lifelong quest. And um, I thought a number of times, in fact, I've been writing this book on and off for four years or more. And a number of times I thought, you know what, you know, who am I? Like, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just not ready to share this. I need, you know, I really need to understand this thoroughly at a much more deeper and metaphysical level and in wait another good five to 10 years before, you know, and, but I had advice from different friends saying, look, um, you know, share, share what you know, share what you've learned and, and at least make that kind of uh, accessible. So um, the things have evolved, but I'll share one simple example is that, uh, you know, early on, 
um, for the first five or 10 years, I was probably just, you know, in a state of asking basic questions like, you know, is it okay to, 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 to want material wealth? <laughs> you know, like, uh, is like, is it, I remember asking one of my teachers, um, you know, a lot of humble, you know, I, I want to, I love the design of the Porsche car. Like, is it, is it okay if I want a Porsche? <laughs> and he goes, uh, Peter, I'll make dua you get a Porsche, but just make sure, you know, you own it and it doesn't own you. Right. You know, in terms of, you know, from the Imam Ali wisdom. Right. And um, things like that. So the book has got lots of those little stories uh, of things like that. Um, so what's evolved as time is that I would say that my journey into the more, I guess, metaphysical understanding of, of design is, is beginning. Um, and so one, someone very instrumental in that has been Dr. Samir Mahmoud, a uh, dear friend and teacher of mine, who's, uh, he did his PhD with uh, Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad in, of Cambridge Muslim College, but then has, uh, has a very vast and broad uh, understanding of uh, design, architecture, and Islamic art. He's taught that as well at the highest level. So through him, I've began to understood more concepts like designing um, with this traditional perspective, the muazin, the uh, the balances or divine governance and order that exists in the universe. That um, if you know traditional Islamic design was always in harmony with that. So if you go to a beautiful Ottoman courtyard or parts of the Alhambra Palace. Um, you'll feel that it just it 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 has an effect on your spiritual state because it's in it's you know it's harmonious to the natural order of design, and so I guess my understanding has gone a little further into that path. But on the other hand, I'd say the experience of just you know running uh, a design team, being involved with more products, working with big mainstream companies like Apple and Google as well, has given me. Uh, a richer understanding of product design and culture and teams and what's required to make these, um, you know, powerful product experiences. So uh, the journey continues, but inshallah, the book shares, I guess, the, the first, my first attempt at this, um, sharing this process. Yeah. Jazakallah khair. I, I think we're reaching the one hour mark. I'm going to ask this one final question here, which is this graphic here about embracing design seeking the path, finding the way, eliminating the road. Describe that to us a little bit, you know, both from design and also from like crafting our, our best life, unlocking yeah. our best. Yeah, mashallah. So the, 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 just to give some kind of structure and focus in terms of how the book is, uh, is shared. And, um, you know, I've kind of put these um, different um uh, you know, I guess, uh, book ends to certain types of knowledge, even though it's all interconnected. So the first part, embracing design, is really all about, about um, just understanding the role of design in our world, you know, and, and the simple activities we can do. But we also grew up in an environment where design is interacting with us and influencing, us, uh, influencing our decisions every moment, every day. Uh, but we may not be aware of that. So embracing design is really you know, recognizing that and then embracing a designer mindset where we ourselves can start, you know, taking a perspective. Um, Hearts and design is kind of talking more directly about what we uh, we just kind of touched on with those different aspirations. Seeking the path is now giving us some more specific planning tools. So how do we take this understanding from these first two chapters and modules and then actually apply it directly? So rather than just kind of like, yeah, I'm really inspired. This is great. I'm gonna just realize I'm gonna, you know, go go build something awesome. You know, we need to actually know where we're going. Like, what are we actually gonna build? How do we then, in the next part, finding the way, start testing that? So, how do we actually make some traction and and sort of, you know, put in some, uh, you know, process to make sure, uh, you know, we're actually moving forward. And the last part, illuminating the road, is is how we then build a community and share it with others? How do we invite people on that journey with us? And, and how do we, inshallah, make our, our products and our, our content, um, you know, something that people welcome and they love. And it's not just, you know, kind of distracting them and taking time. It's actually uh, something that they find enriching and they resonate with. And how do you make sure that you're listening to people, your audiences and communities? And how do you then, um, you know, li live really in this um uh, this intersection or this integration of work life so the the company or product doesn't consume you <laughs> as well so we go through all of these things inshallah that's beautiful that's really really beautiful 
Um, subhanallah. So, so initially, I, I I picked up the first step where you're talking about you know your personal goals and community and global problems, reframing that as a challenge for yourself. You know, what problem are you solving? And then I took like heart center design as more of like that deeper inner alignment, right? To the problem that you're solving, how you're showing up. And then you're learning and seeking the path. You're trying to find the tools and trying to develop the models. And that's just the start. <laughs> Many of us that have been there, we can we can think about those different experiences and iterations. Mm -hmm. And as you as you stay on the path, you start to find your way, right? Like whoever whoever seeks finds and walladina jahadu fina lanahdiyannahum subulana whoever strives the doors and and paths are open for them and then until you get to a place where you're able to really serve and make an impact and eliminate people and communities around you you know starting from within yourself does that kind of capture the journey yeah i think capture the world you you might have to take a Taking a jazz in the heart of design and uh, <laughs> right. start teaching as well, brother. <laughs> You're definitely I'll be, I'll be giving a live jazz to the front of the audience <laughs> <laughs> that I passed this. Uh, alhamdulillah, um, this is amazing, everybody. Thank you so much for um, your working on business. Business, my work. Yeah, that's true. That's that's really true, Sada. Because because when you are because it, it I think it's a lot about tawakkul and for Muslims that are trying to do a heart center you have to have that rida and contentment and keep coming back to Allah despite your failures and setbacks and it, it really helps you I think that business by itself has this power of transformation if you connect it to the heart and and, and the right intentions so um, alhamdulillah beautiful beautiful everybody uh, one more time, make sure that everybody grabs a copy. Um, here's a link. And Jazakallah khair, everyone, for joining. Um, Peter, any last comment for um, before we... Oh, I just thank you so much. It's it's such a beautiful, uh, you know, experience to spend time with you, always Wadud, and your community as well. I'm really um, so grateful for everyone showing an interest in and being enthusiastic and supporting the book. And I'd really uh, love for you to... Uh, you know, take a look at the campaign and, and share it with others as well. Um, you know, in particular, there's two, um, there's also two parts to the journey, right? At the end of that launch good page, which is sponsoring students um, that might like to take the program that, you know, otherwise couldn't afford it because I teach, teach this as a class. Um, I really love to get some support in because quite a few people to reach out and I try to give, you know, certain uh, scholarships and help people, but I'd love, um, I think it's a great gift because there's many promising talented Muslims in the world, but, you know, they're, because of their, um, because of their currency or their economy, it's, it's difficult perhaps for them. So to help me sponsor future designers, like I, I really want to help take, you know, groups through, of course, you know, there's, there's quite a lot of commitment to, to you know, for me to do that. So I just want to do that. And then the last one um, for those very enthusiastic, um, the last tier there is help me sponsor in more languages. So right now it's in English, uh, inshallah, uh, but I would love to do it in Urdu, Turkish, Bahasa, uh, and let's, you know, let's reach millions of more people. Um, I'd really love, uh, so if you know people that are, have uh, the means to support at that level, uh, I'd really welcome, let's get this in more languages and, and, and build a movement together, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, beautiful, beautiful. So um, I, I want to say that my our UX designer from Morocco, my sister Sarah, she is such a big fan and she's excited to join the, I think the next cohort that's going to be launching for the Heart Center Design. And um, a lot of her, like this type of support that you provide to our communities and offer that service. So it's a beautiful service to all of our brands like Morocco, the designs that we're doing, we're also trying to learn from, you know, your experience and expertise as well. So it helps us and, you know, Muslim-centered, the heart-centered brands around the world. So do support, inshallah. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, project. May Allah accept. SubhanAllah, bihamdi, subhanakallah, bihamdik. Shadu Allah, ilaha illa ant. Nasta'afiq, Thank you, everyone, for joining. Masterclass students, I'll be sharing the link inside the WhatsApp group. Just hop onto that call, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you so much.